Dr. Maria Montessori was Italy's first female physician. She was the first woman who ever got a, a license to be a physician in Italy back at the end of the uh, 1800s and the early 1900s. And because she was a woman in a society that didn't place a high value on women and their uh, professional ability, they didn't want her so much practicing in a normal family setting with, with men and women. They instead asked her to do a lot of uh, psychological and psychiatric research. And as she was especially interested in working with young slum children in the slums of Rome as an anthropologist and physician. At the turn of the century, she decided to start her own school. And she was observing children at a hospital in, in Rome, Italy. And from her observations, she decided to start her own school by using a method in which the children can use their hands. Dr. Maria Montessori started this uh, method of education uh, in the year 19, in the 50s. And then she went around the world training teachers to carry on with her method. And she discovered that if she could have the children go at their own pace and use materials that they could move with their hands, that they were able to learn much more and they were able to quiet down, their minds would settle. And some of these slum children who she first worked with became uh, tested higher on test scores than some of the more uh, ad advanced students. She worked, did a lot of work with mentally retarded children and all. Her schools, or the centers that she founded, became a, a, a big sensation in Italy. There was a lot of world press, and she decided that she wanted to devote her life to education and to children. There's a very large difference between a Montessori school system and a traditional school. Uh, for instance, my older daughter is a fifth grade teacher in one of the local uh, public schools. And in her fifth grade class, she has, well, she has 25, 30 children, but she has children developmentally from right about second grade up to maybe developmentally about eighth grade. But there's only one curriculum. There's the fifth grade curriculum. And so she has to give the fifth grade curriculum lessons. The poor second and third grade children, the ones who are developmentally second and third grade, are lost. They can't keep up and they develop feelings and thoughts about themselves or they're not very smart, they can't keep up, they're always behind, and of course behavior problems ensue. And the lessons that are given aren't, don't correspond to their individual needs. And in the same way for the more advanced students in her class, the ones who are developmentally sixth, seventh, eighth graders, they're still getting that fifth grade material because that's the curriculum that has to be taught according to the school district. And so those children don't get the specialized attention that they need. It's sort of a, a one size fits all where everybody walks into the, into the tailor shop and they all get the same size suit. But with the Montessori method, the curriculum is custom tailored to the individual needs of the children and not to what it says in their birth certificate. Traditional school says your birth certificate says this, therefore you go in this class. Traditional school doesn't care developmentally, emotionally, academically, none of that is material. What is material is the birth certificate. And that's a huge difference between the Montessori method and the traditional system. This method of education is a lot different to other <coughs> uh, preschool system. Well, as you can see, you know, uh, we prepare the children, uh, you know, for the activities. If they are not ready, we do not, you know, give it to them because they, they won't be able to understand and we don't want for them to, uh, to face failure. So we prepare them and they are so very happy and they, they are learning a lot of, uh, you know, math and language and sensorial. They use what we call as a cosmic approach especially in the later years, probably third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade on. They use a the cosmic approach in which a child will select a theme, develop the theme. Children have their own table. They work with uh, a, probably a partner, and the adult will come and observe their work. 
help the child if they need help on any kind of work that they're doing. Outside, we're just observers, and uh, we do not interfere with a child's uh, behavior outside unless there's some wrongdoing going on. And in the classroom, we're, we uh, not only observe, we give lessons, to, and we give group lessons as well as individual lessons. The traditional system is kind of a factory system. Everybody comes in through this door, and a year later they all go out through this door. But that isn't really how human development is. Human development is very individual, it's very ongoing, there are so many different variables, and the traditional school system just doesn't take any of that into account. It's a very happy place, you know, as you can see, the children are moving around purposefully, and uh, see, for example, here I'm talking to you, right? And right next to me, just a few inches away from me, Look at these children. Look at their concentration level. Look at them. They are not one bit, you know, disturbed. There are changes here. And then you know, I'm busy talking and they are busy working. You don't find this in any other, you know, system. From inside, I would think it's the best this system because you're allowing the child to work at his own pace. The children are free to move about. They're free to talk to one another, which you don't find in public school, for example. You might find that at other private schools, but they don't have the materials that we have. Uh, the teacher is free to make materials, and I make a lot of materials. I'm free to go buy materials. This program really meets my needs as well as a child, because I enjoy making materials, and I like to present the materials that I make to the children. Uh, and I like also doing the art projects with the children that they probably won't be doing at another school. Like for example, when we were studying the Egyptians, we made a pyramid out of cardboard. Um, so we do a lot of art projects that pertain to the subject area that we're doing. The parents who bring their children here usually have a higher interest in their child's education than if they were than if they didn't have a choice. Parents make a conscious choice to bring their children here, and when you make a choice, you're more engaged in the outcome than if it's just something that's given to you. If you get to order off a menu, you have more interest than if it's just, here's a plate of food, take it. So the, the, the parents who are here have higher expectations. Usually they have high expectations for their children, and those high expectations, uh, and we have high expectations too. So the, the children tend to do very well and the parents are often much more a part of their child's education, much more cooperative than in a traditional system where there's a lot more complacency. Both my children, ages 10 and 6 years old, have been coming here since they were three and a half. Um, the discipline that children learn here is incredible. They learn self-focus, they have learned to be self-motivated, they learn to do all the work on their own. They're taught according to their own ability. They their freedom of about, talk. It's a great environment because the older children teach the younger children, the younger children learn from the older children, and it's just an environment that is conducive to learning. And it's an environment that's conducive to them being free spirits and being themselves without being inhibited and without waiting for the teacher to give them all the materials. And as a parent, I love it here because it's a very small environment. It's about 20 children to one teacher and, and to an assistant, and, and they get full attention. It's, um, as a parent, I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world. I always thought, you know, when I first came to California and uh, went to Disneyland, I just thought that that's the best thing for the children, you know. Earlier, I, earlier when I when I was a Montessori teacher, I thought, Joseph, I thought that uh, Montessori method was the best thing that, I, that ever happened. Best thing that ever happened. Like one of the seven wonders, you know, ever, ever happened. So I, I just feel, you know how a child goes to Disneyland and the child feels that, he, that he's in heaven? Because that's child's world there, Disneyland. And so this, as you can see, this is a child's world here, a learning environment. That's honestly how I feel about my study. What they get out of being here is a great love of learning, uh, overwhelming self-confidence in what they can do. 
they tend to be free thinkers. They tend to be children and young adults who want to know and learn and find out for themselves, not just to accept what somebody's told them. Um, they tend to be very creative children, and they're children who other teachers later on love to get because these children love being in school. They want to learn. They know they can learn. They're very aggressive learners, and that's a blessing for everyone.